Now for our second tutorial, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to, first place, analyze a reinforced concrete uh, frame rather than steel. And secondly, we're going to do a three-dimensional frame instead of just the 2D that we had before. And thirdly, we're going to work in the metric system this time, so we get a whole uh, different look. Additionally, we'll input the raw data via command file rather than go through the graphics interface. So you'll have experience in all different methods. So the first thing to do, we'll start a new project. And we'll have it be a space frame. We'll make sure we're in the metric system. If it weren't, by the way, you would go to File, Configuration, and change your base units. You'd get a warning here if, it, if this conflicted with your base units. So let's click Next. Let's go to the Open STAD Editor and click Finish on that. And we can see that there's some information already filled out in our editor. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and delete that and start everything from scratch. Now we can type in either upper or lower case. It might be a little easier to see in uppercase. So I'm going to do caps lock and then I'm going to begin to type the commands. The first one would be STAD space RC framed structure. So we're going to do a reinforced concrete structure. And then we have to tell it via commands the units. We're going to have unit, meter, and kilonewton. Next, we'll enter the joint coordinates, and we can see from uh, in help tutorials, tutorial number two, uh, we can see where the coordinates are. So uh, we'll tell it first joint coordinates, and then enter them. So X for the first would be 1,000 meters, and we separate uh, the coordinates by semicolon. The second is 203.5, semicolon, 363.5. That'll be the first one. That's X, Y, Z. Then we'll enter 4600, semicolon, 5606, semicolon, and 663.56 for the Z of the uh, second joint. Next we'll enter the member incidences M-E-M-B-E-R incidences and those are as we read from the diagram 112 semicolon 223 semicolon 334 and then 456 semicolon 563 that defines the members by the joints that they are uh, connected to. One thing about doing command entry is you want to keep checking back, make sure that what you've done is correct. And it's really smart to save periodically. The next, after member incidences, we're going to give the member properties and we'll define them using uh, prismatic attributes for which the depth and width values are provided uh, in the millimeter unit, and when uh, depth and width are provided together, STAD considers the section to be rectangular, and when it's done alone, the section is considered to be circular. So let's go ahead and enter unit MMSKN, a member property American, using American standards. So first, would be at one space four, tell it it's prismatic, YD 300 ZD 275. And then the second one, five, pris, YD 350 ZD 275. The third member, pris, Y D 350. So what does that say? It says we have three members. The dimensions of the first member going from one to four are uh, 300 by 275 rectangular cross section. 
second, going from 2 to 5, 350 by 275, and then the, the third member is circular. Uh, so the 350 is the diameter. Next, we want to enter the material constant, the modulus of elasticity, uh, E. So we'll just enter E space 22 MEMB 125. In other words, all the members from 1 to 5 have the same Young's modulus, which in this case is 22 kilonewtons per square millimeter. Now, uh, we'll change the length unit uh, from millimeters back to meters uh, to facilitate other input. So we have unit meter and kilonewtons again. Uh, constants would include density at 25 point zero for all members and Poisson's ratio of 0 0.17 also for all members. Now we have to tell STAD how the members are oriented, the wide and small dimension uh, relative to global dimensions and uh, since we weren't told anything in the problem definition we're going to orient the beams and columns so that the orient member 4, so that its longer edge, is parallel to the global Z. In order to do that, we have to rotate it in a coordinate sense 90 degrees. So we just say beta 90 member 4. We need to define the supports the way they're fixed, and all three at point, at point 1, 4, and 5 are all fixed. So we can just type support 1, 4, 5, fixed. Now we get to the loading on the structure, and uh, we're going to change our units again uh, to facilitate the magnitude of the loads that we have. So we'll change unit. You see how you can do this right along, changing units as is convenient for a particular situation. So we'll change to kilograms from kilonewton, and we'll define while we're here load case um, one is a dead load. And then we'll have the self weight. We have to define the self weight of the uh, members y minus one. What the minus one means is that the, uh, the weight. Uh, will be in the global y plus being up so the minus one says that the weight force will exert in a downward fashion. Now in our case we also have un uniformly distributed load of 400 uh, uh, kilograms so we can enter that like this member load members two Five. Notice we just separate that by spaces. Uh, uni GY minus 400. Uh, the word uni stands for uniformly distributed, and the loads are applied on members two and five in a downward Y uh, direction. Now to enter our live load, we simply type in load two, load case two, or not case, but load number two, live load. And load case two also includes a distributed uh, load. So again, we'll type member load members two, five, uni, gy, in this case, minus 600. Load case three will be a wind load. This is just a title of it. And uh, load case three uh, will have member loads. One, a uni. We know what that means now. GX means in the positive X. 300. And four, also uni GX 500.
and those loads are applied on members one and members four, member one and member four. So then we can do our combined load and that'll be load four, which will be dead plus live, and we're going to have a repeat load. One, 1 1.2, two, 1.5. What this is saying is load case four illustrates the technique employed to instruct STAD to create a load case which consists of data to be assembled from other load cases which we specified earlier. So we're instructing the program to analyze the structure for loads from cases one and two acting simultaneously. The load data values from load case one are multiplied by a factor of 1.2 and the resulting values are utilized in load case four. Similarly, the load case the data values from load case two are multiplied by one and a half, and the resulting values are also utilized in load case four. Continuing, load case five is going to be dead plus wind. So load case five, dead plus wind. Here we're going to repeat load one with a factor of 1.1 and load three with a factor 1.3. We're going to tell STAD that we want a P delta analysis um, and that's a second order analysis uh, to account for P delta effects and we can talk about that later. Now, load list four, five means we're, we're saying that all further calculations should be based on the results of load cases four and five only. The intent here is to restrict design calcs to that for load cases four and five. So now we're ready. We've entered the loads, member properties, the coordinates of the joints, what members are connected to what members, and so we can start our design. So we type start concrete design using the uh, American Concrete Institute code, ACI. We're going to have our uh, calculations uh, in uh, millimeters seconds and newtons. We next tell it uh, with regard to the top and bottom surfaces, so we use the shortcut uh, clear top 25 all and clear uh, bottom surface uh, 30 all uh, clear sides 25 all and FC 25 all, FY main 415 all, and track 1 all. Reviewing those terms, the FC uh, is the uh, strength of concrete, FY main is the ultimate strength of the steel embedded, and uh, you can read lots more about this in section three of the technical reference manual. Next, we tell STAD what we want to design for. So we tell it design beam uh, two and five, members two and five, design column, members one, three, four, and then we tell it uh, to end the design process and finish. So when we hit uh, enter here, the calculations will be performed. Looking back, uh, the design beam 2.5, we're going to design it for flexure, shear, and torsion. And then columns 1, 3, and 4 will be designed for axial load and biaxial bending.